Any girl in China had no right to marry until the emperor refused her. It was believed that a woman had magical powers that flowed from her during coitus and made the man immortal. As a result, the emperor's harem was incredibly huge. At different periods, there were up to 40,000 women in it. But why did parents disfigure their daughters to keep them out of the harem? What representations of the beauties of this time will horrify you? Why was there a lady in the emperor's bedroom who recorded everything that happened in his bed? And what will shock you about the harem order in the Middle Kingdom? We will talk about this and much more in this video. The formation of the Chinese emperor's opulent harem followed an unconventional path. Parents from noble backgrounds were obliged to register their pubescent daughters as potential candidates for the harem. These girls would then embark on a journey to Beijing, where they would undergo interviews for the coveted position. The entire process was meticulously controlled, and parents were unable to arrange marriages for their daughters without proper authorization from the imperial palace, should they fail the interview or be rejected by the emperor. Additionally, the strict segregation of boys and girls ensured the preservation of virginity, effectively resulting in the majority of girls in China being listed as concubines of the emperor. The vast harem of the Chinese emperor served a purpose far beyond mere pleasure or procreation. In China, where every aspect of life is infused with profound Eastern philosophy, matters of sexuality were anything but simple. The emperor, revered as the divine son of heaven, held a lead role in the country's well-being, and his intimate life carried immense significance. Chinese sages regarded women as a wellspring of magical and life-giving power, capable of bestowing immortality upon a man. However, it was believed that this energy was depleted from a woman's body during sexual encounters. Hence, it became of utmost importance for the emperor to maintain a multitude of concubines, ensuring a constant and abundant source of this life-giving energy. In summary, the harem served as a means to harmonize the forces of yin and yang within the emperor's body, safeguarding not only his potency but also the stability and prosperity of the entire nation. The status of each inhabitant within the harem was contingent upon their activity and yin energy. Naturally, the empress possessed the highest energy, but her yin was limited. Consequently, the emperor could only engage in intimate contact with her once a month, aiming to produce strong and intelligent hairs. However, the emperor had the privilege to share his bed with other harem inhabitants more frequently. The frequency of such encounters varied according to the concubine's rank, with those of lower status enjoying more frequent visits. The imperial harem operated under a complex and rigid hierarchy. Newly admitted girls commenced their journey as fifth-ranking individuals, serving as attendants to the more noble concubines. The mere notion of spending a night with the emperor seemed like an unfathomable dream for them. Only with the passage of time and through the accumulation of certain merits, would these girls ascend the ladder of hierarchy, eventually reaching the coveted chambers of the emperor. Thus, the imperial harem functioned as a structured system, where the movement and position of its inhabitants were determined by their merit, energy, and the intricate dynamics of the emperor's intimate encounters. Understanding the intricacies of the emperor's harem within the Middle Kingdom proves to be a highly challenging endeavor. This is not akin to the sultan and his concubines in the Ottoman Empire. No, the complexity here surpasses that and is governed by a strict system. The notion of having four wives for the emperor was no simple matter, for it held deep symbolic meaning. These four wives represented the four cardinal directions and the four seasons, while together with the Son of Heaven, they formed the sacred number five. This number held significance in various aspects, encompassing the five elements, five colors, five senses, and so forth. Thus, from this perspective, the imperial harem stood as a representation of the universe itself. In a later and more extravagant interpretation, it was suggested that the imperial family should resemble a tea set where one teapot is accompanied by numerous cups. This analogy further emphasized the intricate dynamics and interdependence within the harem, akin to the delicate harmony found within a tea ceremony. Moving on to the Qing dynasty, the harem division system witnessed a slightly more straightforward structure compared to the complexities of previous eras. In addition to the empress, an emperor had the opportunity to have one imperial noble consort. Furthermore, there were two noble consorts, four ordinary consorts, six imperial concubines, as well as noble ladies, first-class maids, second-class maids, and royal maids of honor. While still intricate, this system can be considered relatively simpler compared to other harem structures throughout Chinese history. 
During the illustrious Song Dynasty, the imperial concubines were organized into a hierarchical system consisting of 18 grades. These included titles such as Lady of Superior Ceremony, Lady of Noble Ceremony, Lady of Favorable Appearance, Lady of Graceful Appearance, Lady of Flamboyant Manners, Lady of Bright Face, and so forth. Each grade held its own significance and distinction. As the Zhao Dynasty unfolded, the number of ladies within the harem escalated to 120. Each lady was allocated a dedicated residence within the palace grounds, complete with maids and in it to attend to their needs. The quantity of servants assigned was contingent upon their personal rank. Remarkably, as time progressed into the Tang and Ming dynasties, the population within the harem swelled to an astonishing figure of 40,000 women or more. This surge in numbers further exemplified the grandeur and complexity of the imperial harem during those periods. In the harem, concubines were obliged to partake in daily grooming rituals as they needed to be prepared at any given moment for the emperor's summons. The intricate art of applying elaborate makeup and styling their hair into elaborate, towering hairstyles demanded great endurance from them. Within the Middle Kingdom, it was expected that the physical appearances of the ladies emanated a sense of aesthetic harmony, characterized by straight lines. To achieve this desired aesthetic, young girls as young as 10 years old were required to bind their chests using a specialized bow or even a vest. This practice aimed to impede breast development while severely restricting chest mobility and consequently limiting the supply of oxygen to their bodies. Unfortunately, this practice did not contribute to their overall health and well-being. Ladies in that era also practiced shaving off a portion of their forehead to elongate the oval shape of their faces. Additionally, they sought to achieve the desired outline for their lips by applying lipstick in a circular fashion. Etiquette dictated that a woman's countenance should always remain impassive, while her movements were expected to be restrained yet graceful. In such a complex and intricate hierarchy, achieving a promotion was an incredibly arduous task. Alongside their daily responsibilities within the harem, Women were expected to engage in constant study, delving into subjects such as history, languages, and maintaining impeccable appearances. If fortune favored a woman and she was able to ascend in rank, she could anticipate the favor of the emperor or empress. Interestingly, it was often the empresses who handpicked mistresses for their husbands. In cases where the empress was unable to conceive a child, she would select a woman from the harem to bear in hair. It was strictly forbidden for the empress to harbor feelings of jealousy towards her husband in such situations. According to medical professionals of the time, jealousy, as it consumed a woman, resulted in a continuous depletion of her feminine essence and energy from her inner sanctums. And there was no shortage of reasons for envy. In China, a meticulous system of record-keeping governed every aspect of life. The names of the fortunate young women bestowed with the prestigious honor of sharing the bed of the Son of Heaven were meticulously inscribed in a special book by eunuch, elevating their status significantly. Every detail of what unfolded within the emperor's chambers was meticulously documented within those very same books. Such precision and attention to detail were paramount. Eunuchs were responsible for escorting concubines into the emperor's bedroom, while he himself would make his way to his wife. While the time allotted for a concubine's presence in the bedroom was strictly limited, the emperor could spend an entire night with his empress. However, even this visitation was meticulously recorded by the eunuch in a dedicated book. They eagerly awaited the emperor's response, noting whether the act of love had indeed transpired, leaving no detail undocumented. The emperor himself was also bound by the stringent protocols of palace etiquette. Even the frequency of his intimate encounters was regulated. Every five days, he was required to summon a concubine. Only the death of his parents or a period of mourning could temporarily exempt him from this duty for a span of three months. Get ready for a glimpse into the intriguing practices of ancient times. In the intimate chambers of the emperor, solitude was a luxury seldom enjoyed. During their youth, the emperor's actions were closely supervised by his mother, who would offer immediate advice on how to fulfill his conjugal duties with greater propriety. Peeping was also a popular pastime within the harem as it was believed that witnessing the act of lovemaking granted one access to the lover's energy. For those who yearned for their turn, peeping served as a substitute for the experience itself. For newcomers, it became a valuable lesson in the art of intimacy. Special court ladies were appointed to meticulously document the royal connections and verify the legitimacy of children. During the reign the Shang Dynasty, a designated chair was placed in emperor chambers for such a lady. 
She would attentively observe the interactions between the emperor and his concubine, carefully recording every detail with a brush dipped in red ink. These ladies were responsible for handpicking exquisite concubines for the emperor and ensuring that the prescribed schedule of visits was strictly adhered to. In later eras, such duties were entrusted to palace eunuch. The emperor's selection of a concubine for the evening followed a meticulous process. He would retrieve a jade plate from a special chest, adorned with a number or name representing a concubine. Using the corresponding number, he would locate her image in an album. Passion ran deep within the harem itself, where the status of being a virgin was oftentimes considered a disgrace. This drove the concubines to fiercely compete for the opportunity to spend the night with the emperor. Some would even go to great lengths, coaxing artists to portray them in a more appealing light, while attempting to make their rivals appear less attractive. Once the emperor made his choice, he would retrieve a plaque, strike a gong, and hand it over to the duty-bound eunuch. The eunuch would then diligently record the emperor's selection in a special journal, ensuring strict adherence to the established rules. These regulations were meticulously upheld within the winter palaces of Beijing. However, in the summer residences, the emperor had the freedom to deviate from the stringent protocols. Each concubine who had the privilege of sharing the emperor's bed would receive a distinctive seal imprinted on the palm of their hand. This seal would be kept throughout their lives and its absence was considered a disgrace. In their relentless pursuit of becoming the mother of the heir to the throne and attaining the highest position within the harem, concubines were willing to go to extreme lengths. Intrigue, lies, collusion with eunuchs, bribery, and even acts of murder against their rivals were not unheard of within the complex world of the harem. In that era, the concept of beauty in China was twisted and perverse, more akin to a form of punishment. The strict moral codes within Chinese harems evoked such terror in parents and daughters alike that they resorted to disfiguring their children to spare them from becoming concubines. Young girls deemed attractive would have their skin intentionally scarred, whether through cuts over their eyebrows or mouths. This disfigurement would prevent them from being selected for the harem, but it did not hinder their chances of finding a husband. You may wonder how parents could inflict such harm on their own children, but they understood that survival within the harem was far more treacherous than the journey to get there. Life within the gilded cage was far from easy. One figure who reveled in sadistic pleasure was Prince Zhang. His acts of cruelty knew no bounds, as even the slightest transgressions would result in horrifying punishments for his concubines. He would force them to sit naked in trees or condemn them to a slow death by starvation. One particularly notorious example of such cruelty was exhibited by Shai Zhang, the son of Emperor Wu Zhang. His torment of the hapless concubines was so relentless that in 1542, driven to the depths of despair, they conspired to end his life. Unfortunately, their assassination attempt proved unsuccessful, leading to their capture, torture, and eventual execution. The tragic fate of these unfortunate girls serves as a chilling reminder of the brutal reality that unfolded within the confines of the harem. However, there were also instances where the tide turned and the trajectory of a concubine's life took a remarkable shift. A prime example of this is seen in the story of Su Shi, who managed to rise from the depths of the harem to ultimately become an empress in her own right. Her ascent was fueled by her sharp intellect and unwavering determination. That's all for today, if you liked the story, subscribe to the channel and stay in touch.